Impulse and momentum. Impulse. In physics, impulses help us analyze interaction between two objects. Impulse. Impulse is the average force applied over an interval of time. Impulse is given the symbol J, and I don't really know why it's given the symbol J, but it is. And impulse is a vector, and it's in the same direction as the force that makes it up. So impulse is the average force applied over an interval of time. And you can see that force times time is Newton's seconds for the unit. So impulse is measured in Newton seconds. If we look at our illustration here, by the from the time that the ball hits uh, or the racket hits the ball, really until the time that the ball leaves the racket, I kind of showed it in between here, but anyway that interval of time where this force is being applied is what provides the impulse. And again, impulse is in the same direction as the force vector. Notice that a force is going to start to be applied right now, and that's where the impulse starts. So the delta T starts right then, and there is a force being applied. That force will vary, but then it'll eventually, uh, we could take an average of all that, those forces to get an average force, and still uh, acting over this delta T until right now, when the ball leaves the racket. Now there's no more impulse being applied. The impulse was only applied while a force was being applied. But that force, that average force, over that inter interval of time is the impulse. So let's see how this problem is applied to a hammer hitting a nail. Impulse. So back to our seven step problem here. So a hammer hits a nail with an average force of 250 newtons. So we label that F. The impact only lasts 0.05 seconds, and that's our time. What was the impulse experienced by the nail? And also by the hammer, really. Uh, so if we look at that, we uh, get our knowns. Our uh, force is 250 newtons, and our time is 0.05 seconds. And we put those into our illustration here. We label kind of an interval of time. It's kind of hard to draw that over such a short period, so I just put kind of a bracket there. And then our average force, I draw a big force vector here and label it. And then our unknown of impulse, we label that down in our KUF uh, chart. We look at our formula. J equals the average force times the time. And so we quite simply multiply 250 newtons by the 0 0.05 seconds, and we get an impulse of 12.5 newton seconds. Impulse is also calculated by finding the area under the force versus time plot. So we're going to look at a, another technique here, another concept for impulse. But before we do, we want to look back at the tennis ball being hit by the tennis racket. And we're going to see that the force on the ball increases, increases, increases until the ball is squished to a maximum amount. And then the ball starts to jump off of the tennis racket and the force dies down. And the moment that the ball leaves the tennis racket, the impulse has completed. Notice now, the impulse will start again when a tennis uh, racket hits the ball. Notice that the force at the beginning isn't very great, uh, but then the force builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, and you get a maximum force there, and then the ball starts to recoil, and the force would actually get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and then until there is no more force and no more impulse. So that's why the force versus time plot ends up looking like this. The force built up until the ball was completely squished to a maximum force of 120 newtons. And then the force died off until there was no more force and the ball has jumped off the racket. So during that time period, uh, we get a varying force, an increasing and then a decreasing force. So how do we reconcile that? How do we uh, come up with an average force. 
Well, there's a concept for impulse that impulse the area under this force versus time plot. So this shaded region represents that impulse. And if you look at that, that's an area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So one half the base, or really it would be one half the height in this case, which would be 60 times the base, which would be 0 .4, 0 0.04, is the 2.4 newton seconds. So that would be the area under this triangle would be 2.4 newton seconds. Um, another way to think about that is the average force isn't 120. 120 is the maximum force, and the force builds up to 120 and then dies back down to zero here. So what is the average over that time? Well, as it was building up, the average was half of the amount, or 60. As it was dying down, the average was half the amount, or 60. So the average force over the whole interval would have been 60 newtons, and that's why we use that in the equation too. Another way to look at this is if I take this little chunk of triangle right here and flip it around, it could fit right in here. And if I take this other triangle section, it could fit right here so that we would have like a constant amount of force, which would be equivalent to this uh, amount of force uh, changing over this time period. So. The concept is that impulse is the area under the force versus time plot, and you find that average force uh, by kind of leveling out this uh, varying force. Get your hands on the brakes if you need them. <laughs> you scared? Now, as you just saw, I was a little bit crazy there. You saw the little little kid uh, going down the ramp in the wheelchair. From the time that he just got over the lip of the ramp uh, till the bottom, right before he uh, went on the level again, let's say that that was around 2.4 seconds. I kind of timed it. And uh, let's say that uh, gravity was pulling on him with uh, 200 Newton force. As you know, when uh, carts are going down ramps or anything like that, that the force is pretty constant during that period of time. So uh, while he was going down a ramp, his force that he experienced, since it was constant, that is the average force. There's nothing else to level out. The force was the same the entire time at 200 newtons. Therefore, the average force is the 200 newtons times the 2.4 second interval that we averaged it over, and that's 480 newton seconds. So again, if we calculated the area here, uh, that would be base times height, 2.4 times a height of 200 is base times height, and that would calculate that whole area under here. So impulse is the area under the force versus time plot. So one more example here shows a slingshot. Let's say that this slingshot slung a, that marble in two-tenths of a second here. Notice that the slingshot has a maximum force at the beginning, and as the rubber bands uh, are pulling it, they decrease their amount of force down to zero and the shot gets fired. So you'd have a curve that looks like this with a maximum force at the beginning and a minimum or zero force at the end after the two hundredths of a second. So your maximum force is 40, your minimum force is zero, and so the average force is the midway level of that, or 20 newtons. Again, if you could take if you could visualize this as kind of being a big sandbox, and this is a pile of sand up in the corner, if you shake that sandbox, it'll level out to this level. In other words, if you put this little triangle right here, down here, then the average force would be 20 newtons. So we take 20 newtons times 0.2 seconds, and that's four newton seconds. And again, the area right here, this triangle's area, one half the base times the height. So one half of this, uh, one half of the 0.2, which is 0.1 times 40, would still give you four newton seconds. So the area under the force versus time plot is the impulse. Momentum. Notice the bowler is going to wind up and uh, provide an impulse starting there. But now the ball has momentum.
So that bowling ball just had momentum. But what is momentum? Well, it's quite simply the object's mass times its velocity. Now momentum is given the symbol P, and it's a vector, and it's in the same direction as the velocity vector. So momentum, P, right here, is equal to mass times velocity, V, right here. So if we take the six kilogram ball, and mass is measured in kilograms, and the three meters per second that is rolled, and is rolling, that's meters per second, Momentum, as you can see, is measured in kilograms times meters per second. Kind of a unique unit there. So P equals MV, six kilograms times three meters per second is 18 kilograms meters per second. Momentum is what Newton conceived of as motion. So Newton didn't see motion as just the velocity. He saw it as a compound entity of mass times velocity. So let's take a look at Newton's motion momentum. Well, obviously, Newton saw motion differently because he knew that if all objects were going the same speed, they definitely had different meanings. For example, a tennis ball that we could hit going 89 miles an hour or 40 meters per second is quite different if that's coming at you than a baseball going almost 90 miles an hour coming at you. So their speeds uh, don't distinguish really uh, their true meaning of motion. So, and then definitely if a bowling ball is going 89 miles toward you, you definitely gotta get out of the way of that. So as you can see here, their velocities are all the same in this case, but their momentum is getting greater and greater and greater. Their momenta, that's the plural for momentum is momenta. So they may have the same speeds, but because they have different masses, they have different momenta. And the more mass for the same speed gives you more momentum. So now if they had all the same momentum here, all equal momentum, what we would find out is that their speeds would change dramatically. A uh, very fast tennis ball um, would be equated momentum-wise with a kind of a pedestrian uh, lob kind of a throw with a baseball, and then the bowling ball would barely be rolling at all and have the same momentum at this, as this very fast uh, tennis ball. So same momenta, but different velocities. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.